Africa, the cradle of human civilization. It's natural that my journey into the world of wildlife photography would take me back to the richly diverse ecosystem of symbiosis and nature at its most raw and real form. My tour started from Bengaluru via Nairobi to Masai Mara. A chartered flight from Nairobi to Masai Mara was itself a memorable experience with eight of us with the pilots two pilots it was a stunning feeling to sight so many animals from that distance what a way to take off here I would like to thank my friend and photographer Mr. Deepak who made this dream come true where we stayed in Masai Mara. It's called the Riverside Lodge or the Riverside Palace Camp. Very quiet and peaceful. You can see the trees around. You won't be surprised. You get to see a lot of animals outside your camp in the night. This is the main reception area. Very neat and well maintained as we enter this is the place a room for your for the TV and you have a dining room it was hygienic clean this is the place where we stay different cottages we have luxurious Cottages too. As you can all see, the river flows just beside our cottage. You can see the river passing by, and to the surprise, you get a crocodile over there just looking right into your eyes. Supposedly a lion crossed by the river the last night. Sounds of hyenas and baboons over these trees in the night. It was a scary experience. Hi friends. Welcome to the world of Masai Mara. Masai Mara is a place in southwest Kenya widely held as the most famous wildlife reserve in the world and a leading safari destination. Masai Mara is named in honor of Masai. Masai means the tribes, the local tribes who look after the reserve and Mara means spotted in the local Masai language. That is the short bushy trees which dot the landscape. The landscape has grassy plains and rolling hills crossed by the Mara and Palak rivers. It's the most famous wildlife conservation and wilderness area in Africa, supposedly the jewel in the crown of Africa. It's known for its exceptional population of lions, leopards, cheetahs and the African 
bush elephant it is the home for the great migration which is considered as the seven wonders of africa and one of the 10 wonders of the world it's an unbelievable feeling yesterday we got to see a hunt cheetah hunt two hunts in fact today morning incredible we saw around 20 lions at one place now here where the migration takes place this is the sand river having breakfast with the elephant you can see thousands and lakhs of wildebeest zebras waiting to cross the river the total area amounts to almost 1500 square kilometers totally it hosts around 400 species of birds and 95 species of mammals amphibians and reptiles in our 5 days of safari we could view around 85 species of animals and birds birds namely vulture bee eater african pygmy kingfisher ring neck dove eagle hammer cop bird gray heron black ibis bustard helmeted guinea fowl black winged lapwing black bellied bustard lapwing egyptian goose yellow throated long claw francolin yellow billed stork owl black chested snake eagle red necked spur fowl lilac breasted roller gray backed fiskal the ostrich yellow billed ox pecker hi friends day of misamara stop there for breakfast under the tree it has been an incredible experience having seen around 56 species of animals and birds in the last two days we started our safari today at 5:30 in the morning lucky enough to get to see a cheetah with four cubs at one place it was an awesome start for the day here we place a cheetah with two cubs and as you can all see is where we are looking out for the hunt the cheetah looks to be really hungry with its two cubs it almost faced it almost bounced upon a gazelle we are looking for a hunt right now hopefully we get to see it soon we will see a lot more every moment here has been adventure has been an adventure here hope to see more of this There are about 95 species of animals supposedly in this wildlife reserve of Masai Mara namely lions hyenas the bush elephants cape buffalo cheetah serval giraffe zebras leopard eland Impalas, Komodo monitor or the Komodo dragon, 
leopard tortoise common warthog topi hippopotamus harte beast black backed jackal wilde beast thomson's gazelle banded mongoose friends i would like to highlight about the big five that is the big five game animals which are most famous in africa namely the lion leopard rhinoceros african bush elephant and the african buffalo the term was coined by the big game hunters it refers to the five most difficult animals in africa to be hunted on foot it's now widely used by all the safari tour operators i would like to highlight about the lions in specific there are about 850 to 900 lions in masai mara social beings live in groups called as prides each pride with around 15 to 20 in number around 3 to 4 males several females sub adults and cubs their favorite food is the zebra the wildebeest warthogs and the buffalo they usually sleep for 20 hours in a day walk around for about 2 hours and spend their time eating for about 50 minutes they are mostly diurnal active at night and twilight the males are identified by their broader head and mane mane develops at about 1 year of age and the darker the mane denotes the longer reproductive lives and healthier beings weight of an african female lion usually ranges from about 118 to 143 kg and a male lion about 186 to about 225 kg the groups of lions are usually called as prides and the groups of males in particular are known as coalitions adult lioness usually needs to take about 5 kg of meat every day whereas a male lion needs around 7 kg of meat a roar of a lion can be supposedly heard in a quiet jungle for about 8 kilometers the gestation period of an lion is about 110 days and supposedly 80% of the cubs usually 3 to 4 cubs 80% of them die before 2 years of age the life span usually is around 15 to 20 years a baby lion is called a cub the birth weight usually around 1 to 5 kg eyes usually open at about 3 to 11 days their hunting skills are achieved at about 2 years of age they are fully grown and matured by around 3 to 4 years the lion cubs start to eat meat at about 3 months and are weaned at about 6 months because they are carnivores they will eventually eat meat only as they grow up the female lions 
stay within the pride all their lives but the male lions either leave of their own accord or are driven off by the pride males at about 2 to 3 years of age i would like to share with you some interesting information about the masai tribe who actually take care of this wildlife reserve in kenya the masai tribe is an ethnic group inhabiting northern central southern kenya and the northern tanzania among the best known local populations internationally because their residence is usually near most of the game parks of africa and due to their distinctive customs and dressing they speak the ma language most of them speak the official language of kenya and tanzania that is swahili and english most masai tribes welcome the tourists to experience their culture tradition and lifestyle to their villages they are known for their intricate jewelry traditionally their lifestyle centers around cattle which is the main source of food men's wealth is measured in terms of cattle and the number of children the other source of food is raw blood raw milk vegetables raw meat and fruits they consume the bull meat goats and lambs only on occasions earlier each young man in a masai tribe was supposed to kill a lion before he can be circumcised and would enter adulthood The first song that we perform on Sunday before we come here to you, that is just for our coming. That is to appreciate you to say that for taking your own time to come and visit our community. So we say that welcome, be at home, be praying, don't open your heart for us. So open your heart for more questions about us. Okay? Okay, no questions. So welcome to the village. We have a lot of proper dance. We have many dance and all uh, that stuff. Ladies dance that is just called blessing song. You are also wishing long life. Shuka is the Ma word for the clothing for the sheets which were traditionally worn and wrapped around the body. Usually red in color. The Adumu also known as the jumping dance is a highly identifiable Maasai ceremony that has been captured in countless photographs and movies for the Maasai the Adumu is simply one of the several rites that make up the Unoto the event in which the Morani or the younger warriors advance to manhood The juvenile Morani form a circle into which one or two at a time will enter and will begin to jump. The higher and more graceful is the warrior's leap, the more appealing he is to the young woman watching. Coming to the end of this journey, it has been a mind-blowing, exhilarating and once in a lifetime experience i guess it has kept you all engaged and invested all the way and hope you have enjoyed this experience as much as i did thank you
डॉक्टर मोहन कृष्णा डायरेक्टर मातुचा हॉस्पिटल के जी एफ पॉपुलरली नोन एज कोला गोल्ड फील्ड फॉर मोर देन अ सेंचुरी दिस प्लेस इज बींग फेमस फॉर इट्स गोल्ड माइनिंग इट इज सिचुएटेड इन के जी एफ तालुक कोला डिस्ट्रिक्ट कर्नाटका स्टेट इट इज अराउंड हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम बैंगलोर थर्टी किलोमीटर्स फ्रॉम कुपम it is incidentally the second deepest mines in the world and the first city to be electrified in india to go back to the history one fred goodwill was the person to compile the history of this place initially going back to the history it was first ruled by the western gangas then the cholas hoysalas the vijayanagar rule maratha rule the nizam of hyderabad hyder ali and then to the britishers cholas were the during the cholas rule the shiva temple were built in urgampet and marikuppam namely the someshwar temple and the uddandeshwara temple in marikuppam and the shiva temple in urgampet coming to the britishers john taylor was the person who acquired all the mines and his firm started working between the period of 1880 to 1956 during this period people started coming in from the other states like tamil nadu and andhra pradesh namely the arcot districts dharmapuri krishnagiri districts of tamil nadu anandpur and chitwar districts of andhra pradesh they came and started settling down in the outskirts of this place the interiors were occupied by the british officials geologists engineers and other elite people of the place robertson pet and anderson pet the two main places were named after the mining officials schools were started one school right of me st joseph school the bjml school and st therese school were started during the britishers time betamangla lake was built mainly to provide water to the mining area and the first hydroelectric plant in shivana samudra provided electricity to this place this was the second place in asia after tokyo in japan first indian city to be electrified in 1902 in 1956 it was handed over to the government of mysore and was nationalized in 1956 in 1962 a physics lab was established here at a depth of around 8000 feet below ground level to study the properties of protons cosmic rays in 2001 it had to be closed on 28 february 2001 the mines had to be closed due to environmental and economic conditions that prevailed over that time though a lot of gold deposits were still present with this brief history i would like to go around the town give you a glimpse of the various places which is the real identity of this town and more important having developed photography as a passion i would like to go around the unexplored nature and wildlife that is present in and around this town thank you
Hope you had a glimpse of all the places in this small and scenic little town, KGF, that is Kola Goldfields. The Britishers called it the mini England those days due to a lot of similarities. Now I would like to take you to the unexplored, unseen part of this place. Having developed photography as a passion, I went out and to my surprise, pleasant surprise, I could find a lot of bird species over in this place. Some of the places which I could really find, a, find them were one is this Parandahali Lake, another place near, near the PGML mines area and the Bemel area where there were small lakes, grasslands. I was really bewildered to see the number of species that were present in and around this town. Namely, lapwings, wagtails, paya weavers, the parrots, the drongos, the Indian rollers, the black cormorant, the Indian spotted tuck, the hoop and on and on. It was a real experience to go out and have a look at these birds. I would like to stress upon the black bucks which are present over here in the BML HP Nagar area. You will be surprised to see hundreds of them over that place and the point I would like to stress today is that it is unprotected. I would like the forest department and concerned authorities to make the place safe for them. Declare it as a protected area so that they have a healthy environment and at the same time we could develop the place as a sanctuary and a tourism spot. I only hope this message goes out to the concerned people. Thank you. Hope you have a great experience.
coming to the end of this enchanting journey. I only hope this has caused some sort of an awareness about the wildlife, nature that is present over here in KGF. And you all have had a pleasant, wonderful experience. Thank you.